king of the I'm local fonts is Yelp. And uh, most of you have probably heard about this one or used it, and if not, you should download it right away. It's something that covers uh, North America, UK, and Ireland, I believe, are its current locations. And essentially, it's a, it's a souped up yellow pages with uh, you know, local reviews of really just about any kind of business uh, in, in most large U.S. cities. Uh, you just tap the, uh, the category that you want and it shows you what's nearby. Here's my uh, neighborhood restaurants. Uh, tap a, tap a, uh, a marker and it shows you how many stars it's got and what it is that you're looking at. You can click through and you see the, the reviews it's there, sort of a, a quick summary of, uh, of the stars, you know, where it's located, uh, and, and uh, a little bit more information about it. Something that's new in Yelp, something that I think we're going to start seeing more and more uh, in a variety of iPhone apps, is something called augmented reality, which sounds fancy, but it's really just essentially adding road signs to your iPhone view. Uh, this works only with the iPhone 3GS, this particular feature of Yelp. And uh, basically, you just point your, your iPhone in the direction that you want to see, and it overlays uh, information about the things that are around you. So here you're looking at restaurants that are in this particular direction that I'm facing here. Uh, the larger the sort of road sign, the closer it is. You just tap it to get more information as you would before. All right, that's Yelp. Uh, vote it up if you like it. So while Yelp is, is a is great kind of all-purpose uh, uh, resource for finding any kind of business that's nearby and finding reviews of, of things in your local community or wherever you, you might find itself, Urban Spoon is, is tailored more specifically for restaurants. And it's not just my pick for uh, the best app for, for finding a restaurant. Uh, this is actually one of the First, uh, in the first round of apps for the iPhone, it's, it's really held its own ever since. Uh, it has a clever little uh, slot machine interface where you choose uh, three uh, categories uh, for neighborhood, cuisine, and price, and, and then you can uh, it'll find all of the matching uh, restaurants in your area, or you can shake it and it will just spin the wheels and you can. Uh, have a little serendipity in your in your diner. Uh, when you when you choose it, you can vote it up or down and see how other people have voted for the restaurant. So it's sort of a quick way to get a sense of, of uh, how popular a restaurant is in the neighborhood, at least among urban spoon users. Or you can see reviews. And by reviews, it's not like Yelp where it's uh, other users' reviews. It's uh, these are you know newspapers, professional reviewers' reviews. Uh, as well as blog posts and a whole kind of collection of information about the restaurant. Uh, there's also menus. Um, and if, if you don't see a menu um, for the restaurant that you, you're at in the moment, for example, you can actually contribute your own by snapping a picture with your iPhone and uploading it to the site. So that's Urban Spoon. Uh, vote it up if you like it. All right. While you're voting, up, while you're voting on Urban Spoon, let me just uh, mention a couple of other uh, good restaurant apps. Uh, the Gats to Go uh, is, you know, basically the the book version of the uh, popular The Gat uh, City Guide, and it's it's good for a year at a time. Uh, I imagine that sooner or later they're going to start letting you do uh, in-app purchasing to purchase like the next year's guide. For the moment, you buy it for the current year, and then it expires. You go on to buy the next year's reviews, uh, and during the year that you've got it, you'll get uh, sort of steady updates and new restaurants and stuff like within the app. Uh, this is great for uh, big cities. It's not so great if you don't happen to live in a big city, uh, but it's also good for travelers. And the 10 bucks it, it gives you uh, a fair amount of information about the big restaurants in the area. Veg Out is, uh, if you happen to be a vegetarian or vegan, is a great resource. Uh, because it, it has a, a, a huge archive of community contributed reviews of vegetarian, vegetarian friendly restaurants uh, around the world. And so for wherever you go, it's a, it's a great way to, to find a, a vegetarian restaurant if that's your thing. 
uh, again, for the sort of lo you know, what's local, what's happening in my community, uh, now playing as my pick for the best app for movie lovers. Um, you can browse uh, what's showing in your local area by tapping that movies tab and getting a, a quick uh, listing of what open week by week. Uh, so you can see what the new one movies are and also what movies have been around for a while. Uh, the app pulls reviews from the site Rotten Tomatoes, which also gives the, the app an overall 1 to 100 score based on how it's, how it's doing uh, in the press uh, by way of, of critic reviews. Uh, so that's a sort of a quick way to see at a glance not only what's playing in your area, but what's doing well, at least as far as what the critics say. Likewise, you can, you can browse by theater and see what's, what's close by. Once you get there, you can play the trailer, you can read reviews, um, and it's, uh, it, it's, it's a, and, and for, uh, many, for many theaters, you can also buy tickets. The, um, the one thing that, uh, that also sort of sets it apart is that you can manage your Netflix queue, if you happen to be a Netflix fan, and also look at, uh, at DVD releases and what's coming out soon. All right, if you like that, give it a vote. One thing I should mention about uh, now playing, by the way, is that it works internationally. It's, uh, it's a great, uh, it's a great app for no matter where you are in the world. And many of these apps are somewhat uh, country specific. Uh, uh, another good app, just to give a shout out, uh, is to Flixster, which uh, I think now playing is, is often a bit better in terms of uh, seeing what's playing in your current area. It's a slight, slightly slicker interface, but Flixster is terrific because it it, it it looks back at sort of the entire archive of all movies ever made. It kind of gives you a movie encyclopedia in your pocket, basically. Uh, the last thing that I want to uh, mention in this category of, of I'm local is local concerts, which makes it super easy to find live music in your in your in your city uh, or any city that you choose. This is powered by I Like, which is a popular uh, music site on both Facebook and in its own right at ilike.com. Uh, and uh, so what's cool about it is that you can you can it shows you know all the different shows that are playing in your in your city uh, and also if you click that popular tab it kind of winnows it out so it's you know these are sort of the big shows these are shows that a lot of people are going to but if you want to sort of see the whole fire hose of small indie shows for example you tap all you can also uh, browse by venue if you want to see what's playing at a specific place or just an artist that you've marked that you like in your I like account anyway it's a great way super easy to find live music in your city. If you like it, vote it up. So the third category that I mentioned uh, after, you know, finding the apps for when you're bored, finding apps for, you know, when you're local, is finding apps for when you're tasking. By tasking, uh, I really mean working. But it's really miniature, small uh, dashes of work. But the iPhone is great for, again, it's just because it's always with you uh, and provides a, a convenient way to capture information, is that you kind of do these, these bite-sized dashes of work, you know, down to just capturing a quick to-do list item, adding some to your grocery list, um, you know, marking your um, you know, what you've eaten, if you're trying to lose weight, you know, sort of toward a calorie count. It's, it's for these, it's, it's great, and it, while a lot of people are, uh, you know, starting to replace even using their laptops when they're on the road with using the iPhone, it's not a perfect replacement, right? Because it's doing a lot of work on your iPhone, and your thumbs are going to kind of wear out if you try to write a novel on the thing. But uh, it, what it turns out to be ideal for is, you know, really sort of short bursts of work we're capturing short pieces of information. So my, the first thing I'm going to mention seems to fly totally in the face of what I'm looking at, which is Quick Office, which is you know a really great, elegant app for editing Microsoft Word and Excel documents as well as text files. Um, you know, let's face it, the iPhone isn't great for writing, as I said, a giant novel. You know, you're not going to put the entire budget in an Excel sheet and, and build that from scratch on your 
iPhone. But what's great about Quick Office is that you know if you need to refer to a document, make a small quick edit, turn that back around, uh, it's something that you can easily do in the road. Uh, the of course the trick is is actually getting apps, or rather getting documents into the app. Quick Office has some some built-in uh, document features that let you. Uh, swap files with any other computer on the same Wi-Fi network. You can also download files from uh, a mobile me iDisk. Uh, unfortunately, you're not able to get files just because of the way that the uh, iPhone system works. You're not able to get files directly from an email attachment uh, from the mail app. So you actually have to, um, but they have a little workaround for that, which they give you a special email address that you can email or forward, you know, emails to, and any attached files will then be available for download that you can grab through Quick Office. So it's a little bit of a sidestep, but um, ultimately it lets you get you know, just about any of your files into Quick Office for editing. As you can see, it's it uh, you know reproduces sort of simple uh, document formatting, rewraps the line for you. And you just uh, edit it exactly as you'd expect. Just tap inside, start typing away. It gives you a bunch of formatting options uh, for you know creating lists, formatting text. Um, you can't you know for example create tables or add images directly to the file, but it certainly represents those tables and images uh, reasonably well. Spreadsheet is. Uh, Quite good, you know. It comes with a, a number of uh, functions that let you do, you know, all the basic tasks of the spreadsheet, and certainly lets you uh, check in, and make quick edits to the spreadsheets, including adding worksheets. It's great. It's uh, you know, it's, it's a capable little miniature word processor and uh, Excel spreadsheet. Load it up if you like it. All right, the next thing I'm going to mention is uh, to-do lists. Again, this is a bit like the Twitter category. Uh, there are a ton of to-do list uh, apps out there, and there are a lot of really good ones. Uh, ultimately, I choose things because it's, I think it's something that is really flexible for your specific needs. So for people who are hardcore to-do list productivity managers who you know live and breathe uh, getting things done methodology, and make things work great for that. But if you just want to keep a simple list of, of things to do, uh, well, things is the one for you. Uh, adding a to do is super simple. You know, you just you just uh, tap the plus sign at the bottom left of any screen there, and you get this you get this uh, screen that lets you say what it is that you have to do. Add some notes. Uh, add a tag if you like, or context uh, for the getting things done fans out there. You can add due dates, and you can also say where you want the uh, app to appear, which list. I'm sorry, that which where you want the to-do item to appear, which list. Uh, you organize things into projects and things, so you can, you basically collect a whole bunch of to-do lists into individual product into individual projects, and uh, you can also see browse them and just see what's your whole sort of list of things to do, showing uh, the first handful of items for each uh, project in your list. It's really tidy, elegant to-do list manager that I really recommend. All right, if you like it, if you think it would be useful, load it up. All right, uh, just in addition to sort of a general to-do list manager like that, there are also a lot of great uh, list apps that I just want to give a shout out to uh, that are sort of more specific. Uh, there are a lot of grocery list apps out there. Shopper is my favorite. It lets you do a bunch of different things like uh, organize uh, the order of your shopping list based on which store you're in. So if the produce section comes first, you can get that or the cereal aisle. Uh, it's a really flexible, nifty app. It's just 99 cents. Next Read uh, lets you organize reading recommendations. Uh, so when someone mentions a book to you that you want to get, you just throw it into next read. You can also, uh, it's sort of an interesting little thing that they added in there, is that you can also rate books 
based on who recommended them. So if one friend you know, gets more reliable uh, recommendations, you, know, you can say, I want to show that, that this you know, book, it, it, you can sort the books by order of sort of the, uh, the reputation value of your own friends. Noteworthy, uh, similar idea, only with music. Um, you can add bands, music, or albums and music or albums to, uh, to Noteworthy to mark apps or to mark uh, music that you want to check out later. All right, uh, lose it. This is another uh, example of, you know, a good example of capturing, you know, little bits of information throughout your day that the iPhone is so great at. This is something that for people who want to uh, diet or lose weight, um, you create a, a budget, a calorie budget, and then you, you put in through the day uh, what it is that you've eaten, and it sort of tracks your, you know, your progress. You can also put in your activities, and it tracks that, you know, the, the, the calorie credit from your, from your day. Uh, it's a great, easy way to, uh, to keep track of calories for people who are dieting. If you like to lose it, give it a vote. All right. Uh, as a runner, this is one of my favorite apps. Uh, RunKeeper uh, uses the GPS on your iPhone to track your speed, altitude, distance uh, of your run, and even uh, map it as you go. Uh, use a run that I took in Paris. And uh, as you can see, there's sort of some pins along the way. Those gray pins are places where you uh, can add a, an alert. So you can add a photo from that location, which is sort of fun for marathoners, for example, who are uh, out on a route for the first time, want to progress, want to share their progress. All these things can be uploaded to the runkeeper.com site, where you can uh, sort of crunch your statistics, look at your running routes, including uh, charts of altitude and, and speed over the course of your run. So it's a great way to analyze your runs, but also to share them if you, if you choose to share them with others. Uh, although I, I thought it best that for running, obviously its name was originally intended for runners. It also has specific modes for running, hiking, cycling. Uh, so it's actually great for all sports that require covering some territory where you're interested in tracking your own stats. Super personal, uh, great, task-oriented app. Load it up if you like it. All right, speaking of capturing information, you know, that's basically what a note-taking app is for. Uh, Evernote is, is kind of a, the feature-rich, you know, version of a, of a notepad. It lets you take notes uh, and defines notes in a very liberal way. This is to say that you can take a note as a snapshot, uh, as a voice memo, um, or, uh, or, or add a photo from your, from your camera roll. Um, and one thing, and when it does this, it keeps all of your notes online, um, where you can also access them from uh, from the web or from its free desktop apps on Windows or, or Mac. Uh, when you upload a snapshot, it actually recognizes the text in the photo, too. So if you just want to um, take note of, uh, say, a bottle of wine that you had, if you were at an art museum and wanted to grab um, the wall text, take a note, just to take a photo of that uh, label or that wall text, and it uploads to Evernote, where on the server, it recognizes the text and actually catalogs that, so you can search the note of uh, the, the text within the photo, just as you would search for text of notes. The effect is that you basically have sort of a giant pile of, of stuff, you know, that, that giant file cabinet that you can put all of your thoughts and ideas into. Uh, notes that you want to return to. When you browse things, uh, you know, it just shows a, a quick list of photos and text, uh, web clippings that you've gathered. And it also, uh, it also uh, geotags all of your notes. So you can look, you can browse your notes based on things that look close to where you are. If you're trying to find that restaurant uh, that you were at, you know, last year, you can't remember exactly where it is you know it's in a certain neighborhood, you can just uh, tap on that and maybe you, you took a photo of the memo, the, 
menu, excuse me, and you can control that. Now, if all that seems a little baroque, uh, there's also a sort of more simple uh, note-taking app that I recommend called Lightroom. There are a lot of simple note-taking apps. It's one of my favorites. Just straight up, you know, simple app that syncs to the web um, and lets you also access those notes as a result through, uh, through a web browser, if you like. You can also uh, actually use the, you don't have to, to edit notes through the, through the web. You can also connect it to any computer on the same Wi-Fi network. That means that you can actually, uh, it, it, it sort of gives you an outboard keyboard in a sense. So that if you uh, hook up your, uh, your iPhone to another computer on the same Wi-Fi network, you can type notes into that computer, and then they sync over to the iPhone app. Kind of handy. All right, Epicurious is, uh, is my favorite recipe app. Epicurious.com, of course, is the sort of sprawling recipe center online, uh, and it collects the recipes from Gourmet Magazine and, and others. You can browse uh, by category, as you saw on the last screen there, and once you get a recipe, uh, you can build a shopping list from it. So it's a great, giant app. Put it up if you like it. All right, I just have a few more. I'm going to try to speed through those quickly. This is a travel-related app. TripIt, I think, is, is a, a fantastic app for anybody who travels often. The deal is basically, you know, when you uh, make a travel reservation, um, a hotel, flight, rental car, and you get an email confirmation from the website where you made the reservation, you just forward that email to TripIt.com, and then it just processes it, pulls out all of the information. Uh, here you can see what a hotel reservation looks like. And then it, it organizes those things into a full itinerary, helpfully adding directions, for example, to, to the location where you are, what the weather is for that, for that place. So it's effortless uh, itinerary building, which you can then access from your, from your iPhone. Put it up if you like it. I want to look at trip it and we move along to Flight Track Pro, which is, does exactly what you think it does. It, uh, it tracks flights and shows the, the status, including, for example, uh, you can see where they are with the map. A lot of these apps, by the way, for flight tracking, only track within a certain zone, for example, within the U.S. Flight Track Pro uh, tracks and maps uh, anywhere in the world. You can also get uh, current conditions at uh, the airports, including uh, FAA delays and, uh, and weather conditions, so you can kind of get a sense of, of how well it's going. Uh, there is a slightly cheaper version of Flight Track called this Flight Track. I believe it's five bucks, uh, and it's just you know it doesn't expect a few fewer features. Put it up if you like it. One thing I should mention actually is that uh, Flight Track also. Um, integrates with TripIt, which I mentioned before, so it automatically grabs your uh, flights that you've added to TripIt, so you can track those flights super easily right, right from within. Two apps that go great together. Here you can see that it saves, uh, you know, it saves some flights that I might want to reference later. Also on the topic of, uh, of travel, Here's a uh, Here Planet, which, which builds an audio guide as you go, basically grabbing, for the most part, Wikipedia entries, actually, from your surrounding area, and then you can, you can listen to them uh, as you walk around. You know, it's, it's uh, for most of the stuff, it's, you're going to hear a robot voice, which isn't ideal, but they do have some human recordings. But um, if you've ever liked using an audio guide at a museum, this actually brings it to anywhere that you are in the world. I think you like it. All right. Uh, so the best music app, this is, uh, there are sort of three heavy hitters, Last.fm, Pandora Radio, and Slacker Radio. They're all great. The one that, that you ultimately choose is really a matter of, of taste and probably 
uh, what you're accustomed to. Me, I like Last.fm a lot because of all the information that you get about any of the artists. Here you can see I'm, I'm listening to radio that's similar to the band Calexico, which means that I'll get some Calexico, plus a lot of music that has the same Calexico sound, or more specifically, music that uh, other people who listen to Calexico also like. So it's a bit like on Amazon recommending a book based on what you've already bought. It works the same way, playing music based on what other people who listen to Calexico like. You get artist bios and even upcoming events. So you know, once you're listening to a song and you, you want to hear them live, just tap events and you can see where they're playing in the future. If you like Last.fm, give it a vote. Just to want to mention this one. This Simplify Music actually lets you listen to your own music, your own music collection, or your friend's music collection from anywhere on the internet. It's really a little piece of magic. You just put, it, you install the uh, install some software on your desktop computer where you have your music library, and from there you can connect to it from anywhere and stream your entire music library. So if you find that you can't fit it all of your music on your iPhone or iPod. Uh, Simplify Music gives it to you. Browsing the music as you see here looks a lot like uh, the iPod app. Super easy to use, and it really works even over uh, an edge network. 3G network works a little bit better, but I've had good luck with it over edge, too. Load it up if you like it. Uh, sort of on the, on the the topic of crafting your uh, personal uh, sound environment. Sound curtain actually helps you hush the noise by using your iPhone's microphone to adjust uh, some ambient noise, like falling rain, for example, uh, to block out the sound around you. So as things around you get noisier, the rainstorms that you hear through your headphones get louder. Super smart app, very sort of specific thing if you're a little bit fussy about the noise around you, trying to get some work done or read a book. Uh, sound curtain will uh, let you do that in, in some relative quiet. Load it up if you like it. All right. While you're doing that, I just want to remind you quickly that your iPhone is also a phone. Uh, Skype, uh, most of you are probably familiar with, uh, lets you make calls over the network. It requires that you're on Wi-Fi, though. But once you are, you can make very cheap uh, and uh, free calls through Skype. Your Skype scan, uh, go ahead and uh, vote it up. I just have uh, a couple others that I want to mention, so I'm going to just move through this kind of quickly. The other phone-related app that I wanted to mention is called Call Global. Unlike Skype, which can only make calls over your Wi-Fi network, Call Global can work over uh, any phone network. And it's essentially sort of a, a simple interface to a rather elaborate phone card system, essentially. You put in a number that you want to call, it dials a, a local toll-free number, and then forwards your call through that network. So you, you charge your account, and then you can make calls to anywhere in the world, bringing your international costs much lower. If you're someone who makes international calls on your, on your uh, iPhone, you know how kind of ruinously expensive that can be. We also have a feature that, that lets you uh, basically connect calls from anywhere in the world. Uh, you can basically you request that uh, World Call connect a call to a number, and then they call you at the number that you specify, and sort of route the num route the call through. So even if you're, you know, God knows where in the out the middle of nowhere, uh, the uh, you can get a, a cheap call out of one of those phone service. Uh, finally, Dial Zero is just, uh, just want to give a shout out to that. It's a great way to beat uh, phone, uh, to beat, uh, phone trees. Uh, you know, if you just want to get to a human being, Dial Zero will tell you how. You just put in the company that you're trying to reach. It tells you the number along with some instructions to, uh, to, to get to an actual person. There's also uh, an app called Direct Line, which um, uh, it sort of works similarly, but we'll actually dial the number for you. Kind of cool. Load it up if you like it. All right. I see it. It's, sorry, it's 2 o'clock. Uh, I don't know, Kathleen, if we have to wrap up or if we can 
take some uh, take some calls or take some questions. Well, we still have a lot of people on, so um, I think if they're willing to stay, we can stay for a little while and take some questions. And I will, I've also uh, tallied all the votes except for dial zero. Let me grab that one. Okay, um, put that in, and I can open that in another uh, window and post it in the chat room so people can see. Oh, great. Um, I think it would be interesting. Uh, you'll be, the one that got the most yes votes is quite interesting was actually sit or squat. <laughs> there you go. Everyone's been caught, everyone's been caught out, you know, with, a, with any little help. Yes, but it also got a few no votes, which made it, is uh, tying it with, um, with the second most popular, Urban Spoon, which got 63 yes votes and one no vote. So it's a great app. They, so I'm just going to copy this and paste it right now in the chat room. And um, let's see if you can read that if it comes through. Uh, that's not very readable. Let me open it and uh, let me actually share that document so we can all see it. Hold on just a sec. Uh, while you're doing that, I just want to mention uh, a couple of ways if you're also interested in, in keeping up with uh, sort of top iPhone apps going forward. Uh, the book has a companion site called iPhone Apps. Uh, it's at iPhoneApps.oreilly.com. It's shown on your screen there. And uh, we are we just started adding okay. every day Sorry. a new uh, a new pick, a new app pick every day. So just come by and, and see if there's anything that you like there, or follow us on Twitter at O'Reilly iPhone. It's a great site. So let me just show everyone. Um, take this back and show everyone that apps here if you want to take a look at this. I'm sorry, you can't copy and paste it, but I would be glad to send the results to anyone who wants to see them. Just email me afterwards at um, webcast at O'Reilly.com and I'll send them to you because it's, it's interesting. Quite, oh, did I get the whole, oh, that's page one. Here's page two. Um, so I also pasted that in the chat room. Uh, so you can copy that if you want to take a look. So, uh, so you want to take a couple of questions if we have any? Sure, I sure. While while we do that, would you like to put together a, a screen too, or sort of, if you could only have ten, what what my ten top apps would oh. be? A lot of people would like to know that, so let me uh, cash you back the ball there. Okay, great. I can and just sort of put that put that up there while. Well. Great. And Marcy, as Marcy pointed out, um, we have a discount for 40% off the best iPhone apps for any books that you order from O'Reilly. Just use the code forecast when you order. That's for the numeral four, C-A-S-T. She pasted that in there. It really is the best discount that you can get anywhere. So um, you should take the most of it if you're interested in buying. So here's a question for you from Michael. What about driving directions? What, what do you use for that? Well, there are, um, so of course, it's a very sort of simplest way, right? There's, there's the Maps app that, that comes with uh, the iPhone that gives you, uh, uh, you know, driving or walking directions thanks to the dang Google Maps. Uh, but I would say my pick for that is Navigon, uh, which is, uh, I think, the, the best iPhone app out there for giving you, uh, you know, driving directions, you know, turn by turn driving directions as you're familiar with with GPS. TomTom uh, Tom, uh, also, you know, is a much touted uh, recent arrival there, uh, although I think the Navigon uh, systems are, are the best. Okay, well, I think we'd better wrap it up for the day. We're, we've gone over the hour mark and people probably have uh, places that they need to be, so I'm I uh, just want to thank you, Josh. This was great. And, oh, I'm so um, glad. It was a lot of fun. I really liked the voting. And um, I want to thank everyone for joining us, for bearing with us through the voiceover IP. And again, I'd appreciate uh, comments and feedback on that because uh, we'd like to troubleshoot it if we can. It just makes sense for everyone. But if it's not usable, then it's not. And um, if you want a copy of the chat room, a lot of people do, you, you'll have to copy and paste it. And there's, you, on the Mac, you can't really select all, which is kind of a drag, but just copy the whole thing and paste it into a text file. 
And if you don't grab that, you can also email me at webcast at O'Reilly.com, and I'll be sure to send you a copy. I always grab it. So thanks, everyone, and thank you, Josh. And I'm going to close out the, uh, close out the uh, window now. Thanks, everyone. All right. Goodbye.